Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to touch base on the two topic and that is one of the topic is the redundancy, how exactly redundancy is getting configured into the codices and what all the networking uh, configuration we need to do to make this redundancy work for the virtual PLC and also I will touch base on the networking part how exactly we can bring the different devices and talk between different virtual PLCs. So let's get started first with the redundancy. So in order to make redundancy work, first we need to go into the application and add the object called redundancy configuration. Okay, so once it is getting added, you will see that a new tab will be opened and there we can see the different options to configure. Okay, so the first PLC is getting automatically come because that we are already connected. Second uh, PLC, uh, we need to configure it. So I'm going to add the device so i need to as i'm using virtual plc here uh, so i am just typing the device ip and then giving the port number why port number because i'm accessing it uh, all those plc from the my local uh, system so local host is trying to connect so with the port uh, access we can be able to access the virtual plcs okay so uh, once uh, I am connected, then I will give the username and password for the PLC. And then you can see that the another PLC is also showing there. Okay, then we need to go to the residency setting. So this is the main uh, configuration which we need to do. So we need to first click on the browse. So you will see the IP address or, and the interface name that we need to select. And same thing we need to do for the second PLC. So there again, uh, it will ask for you for the password and username. And then we can select and then uh, we can click OK. So once this is configured, port number we will keep 1205 default. We can change also uh, based on our need. OK, now uh, we will go to the general. Sometime you will not see the task name. So we need to we can use main task or the task which uh, you have configured. We will give the auto sync. So auto sync basically it will synchronize automatically and data sync always. OK, so that is all the optional configuration if we want to do. And here I will try to enable also the visualization so that when we are doing the visualization part, we can see how exactly during the residency it works. Okay, so here also we need to provide the IP addresses and the port number. Okay, so uh, IP addresses uh, we can provide manually or even we can uh, type, uh, go to the browse and we can provide it. So I'm just trying to put here. So IP address exactly from where we will get. So this is the same IP address which we can utilize. Okay. So uh, we will put here and then two. So this is for PLC one and then same thing we need to put for PLC two. Okay. If we, and then we have to give the port number. I will let you know how the port number, even we can browse. So we can browse. So, okay. It is coming here as three. So we can select. Uh, which one is coming and then once we select and click OK uh, then yeah it will get sorted out so yes so let me I cancelled it so OK so this one uh, we are set now port number so for the port number actually uh, we need to expose these port numbers OK so how exactly we expose so we need to go to the uh, deploy control SL so let me go to deploy control SL and here in the configuration if you see we have the ports so I what we configure here so we expose those ports from the different PLCs okay so in order to uh, make this port configuration uh, let me so that configure type is not uh, right now enabled correct because both the PLC are running state so I will stop this particular PLC and then we will go to the, again go back to the configuration once it gets stopped so once yeah it is stopped in idle condition now if i go to the time the configure option will get enabled and there we can configure the port number so as the default port for the web uh, server is 8080 so i will map it to 8085 should get mapped with the 8080 so this is the ports so now the 8080 will expose it over 8085 okay and uh, same thing means we can start all the plc okay so same thing i have also configured in the virtual plc a so a is for active and r is for the end and then we can put the port number here so for the three 
आई पी नंबर हैड एट जीरो एट फाइव ओके सो एट जीरो एट फाइव एंड फॉर ही दिस वन इट विल बी एट जीरो एट फोर वंस वी आर रन देन वी हैव टू जनरल एंड या एवरी थिंग इज सेट देन वॉट विल डू वी विल क्लिक ऑन द राइट सो वंस वी क्लिक ऑन द राइट इट विल राइट दिस कन्फिग्रेशन इज द पी एल सी नाउ इफ वी गो टू द लॉग सो लेट मी गो टू द लॉग so if you see here when i get connected it say the dns setting has been written restart plc to activate okay so now uh, again we will go and restart this plc so uh, both the plc we will stop so maybe courses could have given here the option to restart instead of uh, stop and start so that's uh, okay so that can come because earlier we for other uh, run time we have that reboot correct so the start is also there so that can be also done so instead of clicking multiple times stop and then start uh, we could have used that but that's fine so now we will start all again so sometime uh, you will see that uh, during the startup both the plc if we start at the same time uh, it sometime it doesn't get synchronized and then you so it is better to uh, start one by one so the active should get first started and then the uh, the dependent passive one so if you see here it comes into the state of active and passive okay and in the application you will see that application is getting loaded into the second plc so right now we are in the second plc okay and uh, if i see here everything is uh, create asymmetric key done so and then the dependency setting anyhow it remains and uh, object so now if you see uh, if i go online So I have written a small code also to uh, read back uh, with which PLC I am connected, and we can also switch from here. Okay, uh, so there is an error. Okay, I have enabled the visualization, but I have not added any visualization here. So that is what exactly the error is giving. So let me just add the visualization also. So I will not take time here. Uh, I will just come back by adding the visualization. So we can go to visualization and visualization managers. We can add it. okay so select the symbols so in this way we can add the visualization and uh, then we can uh, check so let me do it and then we will go online so i have configured the visualization and uh, so yeah and we are online so now you can see that uh, i am online with uh, plc1 so 8084 uh, with the port number uh, i am online and the data is showing on the visualization so uh, now if i switch it back so let me make the plc a as a standby so if i go here and let me go to online again so if you see right now a1 is active and second is passive okay so i will say that one should go to the passive okay standby mode now if i go here you can see that uh, first one become passive and second one become active okay now let me go offline and connect it to second plc so i it we see i don't have to download i will just add, go with the username and password and then it will get online automatically because it already has the application same application is running in the both the plcs okay so uh, no download is needed okay now if i go here then it will show that id of the plc and uh, uh, right now it is in active mode okay so now if i go here yeah so if you see here it is showing both are active because right now i'm connected basically to the second plc so there it will show always the same status in all both the uh, both plc so that is how it is even if i configure it again i will make switch it to standby and then i go and check both will become passive okay here it will show passive whereas it is showing the status of actually the second plc okay so now uh, if i go back again to the first plc there i can see the actual status so before that if i go to the visualization and okay my ip changed so let me just again so 8084 if you see this is again uh, running and if i go to the second one which is uh, 8085 the redundant one okay that will not show me any data but it is uh, right now in error state and so whenever i will go back to the uh, plc uh, in the redundancy then it will show me the data over 8085 Okay, so again, uh, let me go online, and yeah, if I go to the, let me go online here. 
if I go back to the NC configuration, I can see here uh, the PLC1 is active and PLC2 is passive. So in this way, uh, we can be able to switch over from one PLC to another and it will have the da data intact. We can also switch it over from here, switch over if button is there, so there we can do. So uh, let me show you that part. So here, if you see right now, 8084 port, uh, I'm connected and showing the visualization. So let me open also other port, so 8085. Okay, so if, if you can see here, it is still in connecting phase. Okay, and uh, when I go back to codices and into the residency, so let me go to the NC and when I click on switch over, okay, so active will become passive and passive will become active. And if I go back to the visualization, then we can see that the 8 fourth port okay 8084 it is in going into connecting and 8085 has been connected and it is showing the data so this is uh, what exactly will happen so as it is working so data will be there it will always keep working on that part okay so this is uh, switch over way we can utilize also from here and also programmatically so okay so uh, now let's go uh, to how exactly this uh, networking worked. So there are few configuration which we need to do into the virtual PLC uh, case. So uh, if you go to the deploy configuration, okay. So if you see here network, so in the network, I'm giving the network name. Okay. So from where exactly I got this network name. So if I go back to the, uh, my virtual machine, uh, there, if I type the IP address, so here you can see that when I deployed, it has created multiple networks. Okay. So now, uh, we can select over which network exact, exactly we need to bring the PLC. So basic thing is that in order to make them redundant or in order to make them communication enabled we need to bring the both the PLC onto the same network, correct? So the, I'm using this Docker zero network uh, name and then only uh, what I'm configuring it there. Okay, so in the network name, I've given the Docker zero uh, as a network name. And because of this, both the PLC, if you have seen, they have they are coming into the same IP address. Uh, so let me show on the another one also. So if I go to the, yeah, I need to first stop it. So stop the selected one and then if I go back to the configuration. So let it get stopped. It takes some time. Yeah. So if I go back to the configuration here also, you can see in the uh, PLC A, I have given the network as Docker zero. So both the PLC are on the same network and in that way, actually exactly it is uh, working. So uh, I've just in order to show the different networking so i'm just trying to configure the ethernet ip so i created another instance of for the ethernet ip so third instance of the virtual plc which is running so uh, okay so let me stop it so with this particular configuration so what i'm trying to show here is that if i bring this third instance and i bring that also on the same network okay so when it will come on the same network then my ethernet ip modbus tcp ip or superfinet i can be able to communicate between both the plc instances okay so that is uh, the thing which uh, it, i will i'm trying to show here so if i go back to the ethernet one and if you see i have also configured the network as net docker zero so now all these three plc are actually on the same network and they will be uh, communicating with each other without any issue so that is one configuration which we need to understand in the case of virtual plc okay so uh, with this uh, we can be able to start the communication uh, let me start all the plcs and with this uh, we will be able to communicate over ethernet ip also so one of the plc i am configured it as a adapter and another one is a scanner and then uh, i have just configured basic uh, parameter to exchange the data okay so once uh, all the PLCs are up, so let me go. Yeah, so let me go online. And once I'm online, I can you can see that the Ethernet IP communication is actually uh, working. So adapter and scanner both are connected. Uh, so uh, we can be able to exchange the data over Ethernet IP between two PLCs. Okay, let me go online here also with the second one. So username and password. 
and yeah so let's exchange some data so i will try to simulate the values and we can be able to see it so if i pass the value over the output and we can see that on the input of the another plc okay so the data i passed from 10 and then it is communicating so rest everything remains as we were doing the main thing was is the making them and bringing them on the same network otherwise it remains actually the same so there is no difference how exactly both communicate so normally uh, this is how uh, the ethernet ip or any of the protocol and desktop protocol will work uh, if we want to communicate but sometimes uh, we need to exchange the data between two plc only and there we will not try to do with uh, uh, industrial protocols correct so there's another option data source manager uh, in the data source manager uh, we can configure the data source we can use codice symbolic so with this actually uh, we don't need uh, to do all the resistant ip of profinet we will just provide the plc address of the device another plc okay and then uh, using uh, the symbolic uh, variables okay we can be able to exchange the data between uh, both the PLC. So here we will give the credential for uh, connecting. So that is a very good option given by the codices uh, and easy way to uh, communicate between two PLCs. Okay, so here if you see, this is what was exposed using this on the sim symbol configuration. Okay, and uh, it is configured. So just few clicks and update always so that it should get updated every time now if i go here and i will just what we need to do is uh, we need to map here the variable so for example ao2 uh, ao1 variable i am trying to map with data source so that is what the object is from there we will get the application when i click dot then the main program and the uh, variable okay so this is how the structure it will show let me download this particular program and uh, with this when uh, it will it online we can see that the data source is active and i'm able to get the data over data source into the second plc so from the one first plc i'm able to get the data over second plc so let me yeah if you see here the value of ai2 uh, is changing and that is what exactly it is showing on the second plc so this is the very easy way to uh, communicate between two uh, instances of the virtual PLC or even with the hardware PLC, uh, we can be able to uh, fetch the data. We don't have to use any uh, network variable or any uh, industrial protocols. Okay. So yeah, that's all in this particular video and uh, keep exploring the virtual PLC and keep playing with it. It's a good thing to explore and learn. Thank you. Thanks for watching. That's all for this video. Uh, see you in the next one.